Hello everybody. With the release of Reaper version 4, Kakos allowed musicians and engineers on a budget access to a very powerful mastering output format called DDP. Disk Description Protocol is a robust and reliable format when creating CDs for mass reproduction. Usually the way that most people who are mixing and mastering in home studios deliver disk to disk plants is by sending them a burned CD in the mail. Well, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of DDP. Instead of making an audio CDR that is prone to errors and the plant ripping your tracks at a high speed, therefore losing quality that can potentially make your tracks sound harsh, wouldn't you rather deliver files that will be essentially one-to-one -one replicas of all the hard work you put in. As an added benefit, you can send DDP files over the internet to the disk pressing plants, so you save on postage and material cost. But, unfortunately, there's a little more legwork required. But don't be intimidated. I'm about to show you how to make these DDP files and verify that they work. It's really simple once you make your first one. First, you'll need three things. A copy of Reaper, a copy of DDP tools, and a copy of VLC Media Player. The latter two programs are freeware. And links to all three programs are provided in the video description. If you're on a Mac, You'll have to find an equivalent program for DDP tools, which I'm not sure exist. First, after you download DDP tools, make sure you install it in your C drive, also known as your system drive. And this, this step is very important for later in the video. Then come over here to Reaper and under file, go to project settings and change your sample rate to 441. Change your project tempo, which is right here, to 240. And then change your project frame rate to 75. And hit and then hit okay. Next, down here on your time code, right click this and change it to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And then go up to grid and right click that and change this to 1 slash 75. And then as a test, I'm going to zoom into this. And it looks, it looks like I'm good to go. The next step is to make sure your cursor is at the home position here. So just hit your home key or click your cursor as close as possible so that your time code is at zero. I usually just hit the home key, it's much faster. And then we're going to import all of our tracks. And when, you, when this dialog box pops up, hit no because we want everything on one track. Okay, so all of our tracks are loaded. These particular tracks are 16-bit 441. A lot of times my master files will be 32-bit floating point, maybe even 64. And, you know, that part doesn't really matter. What matters is the sampling rate's done and you dither as your last step, which we'll get to later. But step number one, 
By the way, we are using Godsmack's 1998 self-titled release for this example, but unfortunately you can't hear it for copyright reasons. But just to make things a little bit faster, I chose to use these tracks. It's important that your CD is no longer than 74 minutes. Some CD plants can use longer lengths, but CD reliability starts to get crappy after 74 minutes. And it looks like this project is 55 minutes and 15 seconds. So we're good on that. The very first step is to mark with the letter M, or if, you, if that shortcut has changed for whatever reason, go up here to insert marker, and you'll see a marker is set at the very, very beginning of the project. Down here is your time code, or up here you can see it's at zero. It's very important that this start at zero. Right click on the marker, and choose Edit Marker, and change the name to Exclamation Point, which is Shift 1, and then hit OK. This is known as an Index 0, and the Red Book CD standard requires two seconds of silence at the beginning of the CD. This is also known as Track 1's pre-gap. So, unless you want part of your music cut off, you need to leave exactly two seconds of silence at the very beginning. And the way you do this is just go over, make sure snapping's on, and it is. Go over to two seconds, and as you see, we are at frame uh, two, so we don't want to do that. We want to go to two seconds exactly and then hit M and right click again, edit the marker and change this to the hash marker, shift three. And now we're going to type in the track name, which is Moon Baby. And then the next step is, I don't even know what the symbol's called, but it's right next to your bracket symbol you got to hit shift. I'm going to show a picture of it right now on the screen. And then you type in the capital letters performer equals Godsmack. And then that little vertical line again. No spaces. ISRC equals and then for this example, I'm just going to type in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1. Now, in order to get ISRC codes, you need to go to, I believe it's, it's usisrc.org if you're in the United States. If you're not in the United States then go to ifpi.org to find your country. So after that's done, hit OK. So we just made one track. Woohoo! You can also enter other information, which I'll tell you about later. But for now, we just have the track title, the artist slash performer, and the ISRC code. That's not required information. Really, you can just have a hash mark and be done with it. But if you're interested in CD text being encoded, then that information is vital. So what you do is you go to your next track. An easy way to do that is to just go over to the edge right here. And you see how that's a bracket now? If you click it, your cursor moves to right between two files. Now that's assuming that these two files are already mixed and faded properly. You can hit M again. 
right click edit marker and again hash name of the song which is whatever performer now usually what I do I already had this information typed out on a separate sheet so I'm just copying and pasting at that point you know I already have the hash on there and the song title all that stuff is already on a separate file you know like like I have a Microsoft Word document open and I'm copying and pasting this information just to save time and just that's really it you just go through here and you make your markers where you want new tracks to begin another thing that you can do is insert the index zeros at the end of a track and then the index one is what is set when people are shifting through tracks on a CD player and they're skipping through tracks the index one is the beginning of that track now one tip I'll give you is you should have 160 milliseconds of non-vital information at the start of every track so that when certain CD players don't start at the very very beginning of index one which is what the hash mark is called in CD terms you should give that much of a buffer so that um that information isn't isn't erased or not her I should say the index zero comes into play if you make a live concert CD and you want the start of the actual music to start at index one, but you set index zero, your exclamation point marker, to like, you know, maybe the end or the middle of applause. And that's so that when somebody's listening to the entire CD, nothing gets messed up, but also if somebody's skipping through to find songs, the beginning of the song starts and not, you know, the middle of applause or if like a lead singer is talking to the audience, it doesn't start in the middle of that. Now, if you want that the actual track to start there, then you can do that, but it gives you the option um, if you want that. But bear in mind, you don't have to put index zero markers in here at all. And in fact, on tracks that might crossfade like this, <clears throat> you see how this is crossfading? We can put a marker in between here. And when the CD is playing back, it, you know, it's a smooth transition. If you ever wondered how people did that, there's your answer. The other benefit of making DDP files in this way is let's say you want to do a last minute level adjustment and you realize, oh God, this track is like six decibels quieter, you know, I, or, you know, whatever. You can actually go here, right click on item properties and then change this to plus six or whatever. Or if the track is louder, you can just go up here, see how the arrow changed and then just go like that. It's a very, very nifty thing to do CD mastering this way. In the interest of saving time, I've already created this DDP project and marked everything so I can show you the last step. Okay, so here's our whole project that's finished. As you see, everything is marked off. Everything's labeled properly. Um, a, th a thing that you should keep in mind is however many tracks are on your CD, that's how many hash marks you should see. And the last step is to enter album information, which is right here. Right click this. And as you see, this marker starts off with the at symbol, which of course is shift plus two. And then you type in the name of the album, which is Godsmack, the performer, which is Godsmack as well. 
And then EAN is the UPC code. And then again, we have that vertical line separates everything. You know, every time there's something that's different, that vertical line is separating things. And the last thing that I put in here is the genre, which is alternative rock. And then the language is obviously English. This information and a huge list of this information can be found in the DDP help file, which is in Reaper. So usually <clears throat> this album information is set at the very, very end of the CD because that's considered the most readable part of the CD in case something ever happens like scratches. This information can be located and it's not messed up. The last thing that I usually do is put ozone on this track because I love ozone's dither. Again, when I downsample my mastered tracks, I don't have any dither put on so that I can use this as the second to the last step. So I'll just put the, usually what I'll do is just put the limiter on negative 0.2. I've already DC filtered the files. If not, I'll type this, I'll put that on, but I'll change my dither type. It's already on Mbit plus. Usually I just put it on medium, 16 bit and normal. And I might have these two checked as well. Usually I do just, just for the heck of it. But if you don't have ozone, an alternative is this included plugin on Reaper called Dither Psycho. Some people prefer this over the default Reaper Dither. It's an option. But since these files are already 16-bit, I'm not going to have that on. Uh, next step. I'm sorry, second to the last step. Go back to the end here. If I wasn't explaining the dither part, I, I could have did this right away. But make sure snapping is disabled. So that's off now. And I'm going to select... Actually, you know, you can keep snapping on. I'm going to go here. And so this marker is at 73. I'm going to start it here and start grabbing everything. And then I'm going to zoom out while I'm doing this, just so it goes quicker. And I'm dragging this all the way to the beginning. As you can see over here, selection is at the very beginning. The end time is the end. And then it shows you the length of the entire project. This is an important step. So last thing we do, go to file, render. And we're going to change this. This should be on master mix. And this should be on time selection. And the directory should be on your C drive in the DDP tools directory and Godsmack or, you know, insert your title name here. So CD album or whatever, but I'm going to keep it as Godsmack. And the file name should be called image. I was messing around with names the other night. And apparently you have to call it image. I don't know why. Maybe it was a fluke, but image has worked really well. Um, the other important thing is sample rate is at 441. Stereo channels. This can be full speed offline. And output format. You know, if yours is on wave, change it to DDP. Uh, the DDP help file is right here. Click this question mark. 
Unfortunately, it's very confusing, which is why I made this video for you. Uh, what I recommend doing is um, selecting everything here. So from the top, just select everything and go down. And then right click, copy, and then paste this into a word processing program just because sometimes it's hard to read this. It's all jumbled together. But um, like I was saying earlier, if you want to add extra genres, you know, I, I did alternative rock. But your, your genres are listed here. Your additional information, see how it says uh, hash markers, recognize these keys. So if you want to put all that information in, the more the merrier, I guess. And then your album information can contain this as well. The languages are down here. It's just, just all so you, you know for future reference. And then once this is all selected, we're going to hit render one file. And it goes pretty darn fast. So I'll be back after it's done rendering. One thing I forgot to mention. I named my folder Godsmack. Do not use any weird characters like, you know, these when you name your folder. Just, just keep it alphanumerical so that this next step isn't frustrating. Now that the files are made, it's time to verify that everything worked properly. And if you've never used DOS or a command prompt, <laughs> welcome to old school computing. Don't get intimidated. All the hard stuff is already over. Just follow my guidelines and you'll be all right. So go down here to the start menu and click run. And if it's, you know, it's probably not already in there. It is for me, though. Type in CMD and hit OK. And you'll get a smaller screen. I've already expanded mine. So if you want to expand yours, right click on the title bar and go down to properties. And then see where it says window size. Change that. Or I'm sorry, the screen buffer size, I think, is what I changed. But regardless, it'll make this bigger. See how that is filling that box. I don't like having small command prompts. That's not how I've grown up with MS-DOS. So anyway, we're at the command line prompt. And we're going to get to our DDP directory. So the way you do that, see how it's called DDP tools and it's off your C drive. We're already in the C drive. If you're not, type in C c colon and press enter um but we type in cd slash ddp tools and now we're in the ddp tools directory just to verify you type in dir hit enter there's all our files so we're going to use the ddp info program sorry for the pops so ddp info if you type that in, it'll tell you, we'll type help, dummy. So type DDP info again, dash help, and it pulls this up. Now, I already know what I'm doing. This doesn't really tell you everything you need to know. Um, it does, but in kind of a roundabout way. If you've followed all my steps so far, you're... DDP files are in the DDP tools directory under its own folder called whatever. Mine's Godsmack. Yours will be, you know, whatever. This is really important for the next step, which is we're first going to verify the MDI file or the, the MD5 file. So as you can see up here, it says... You can either type dash Y or dash dash verify. So to save time, we're just going to press um, DDP info dash Y. And then um, see this part up here? It says DDP info options and then DDP directory. So we've already typed our option. And we're going to type in Godsmack or whatever your folder is called. And now it's running its thing. 
everything should check out okay. All right, so everything's okay. The next thing I like to do to verify that this worked properly is to extract a, what's called a Q slash wave image. And we do that by, again, type in DDP info dash W space. And then I'm gonna type in the file name. So I'm gonna say Godsmack album and then Godsmack for the directory and then hit enter. And now it's doing its thing. All right, it said it successfully wrote the file. So I'm going to click on the DDP full. <laughs> I'm going to type in, I'm going to click on the DDP tools folder. And you see it made three files. These Godsmack album files. Now, an important step, if you can't see file name extensions, which is, see how it says .pdf and .exe, .pdf, .txt, if you can't see that on your screen, here's what you need to do. Go to Start, Settings, Control Panel, and then go to Folder Options. Click the View tab. And then you see, uh, scrolling down here, you see this where it says Hide Extensions for Known File Types? Make sure that's unchecked. And then hit Apply, and then hit OK. And you should be able to see all these file extensions. So right now we have, again, these three files. We're going to rename Godsmack Album to Godsmack Album dot wave, W-A-V. Hit enter. And now we're going to come back under Reaper and hit X out of that. And we're going to import this file. So we can either do it the long way or just drag and drop. So I'm just dragging and dropping. And you'll notice it has tags on it, but you'll notice, wait, like, wait a minute. It, it doesn't match the file up here. And that's because DDP info automatically erases the first two seconds. So if you take the file and change the beginning so that it matches the beginning of this. So at the exact two second mark, which you see, it should null. If everything was exported properly, it should null when we change our um, polarity, which is this, the phase button. If we change this to reverse or inverted, phase inverted, it should null, which means on here, our master won't show anything. These tracks are exactly similar. Just keep going through the entire thing just to verify it. If I were to take this off here, if I were to take the phase and put it on normal, like right now, it comes back up. But as soon as I hit that, it nulls again. And that shows you that we did a good job. There's one last thing I like to do, and this is for the master or the, the CD plants benefit. Again, type in DDP info dash D space your directory again. So Godsmack. And it says that it wrote a Q file. So at this point, I'm going to open up Notepad for the next step. Okay, Notepad is open, and we're going to go back to the DDP Tools folder and go to the Godsmack directory. And here's our new file, DDP Image Q. Left click this and drag it into Notepad. And as you can see, we got some cool information, which 
you can rearrange. Um, right now I have my word wrap off. I recommend typing or keeping word wrap off. And what I like to do is separate this like so. And basically what I'm doing is I'm duplicating, if you go back under the command prompt here, DDP info dash C God smack. You see how that looks nice and uniform. I'm going to duplicate that. And So yeah, see I messed that up. So binary needs to stay on that line. And then we have track one, title, performer, ISRC, index, index again, and then double, tr double uh, enter, and then start over. Same thing for everything. and so on for the rest of the tracks. Again, we're matching what this says, and you know this is time code that would be important for the CD plant just to verify that they received your files properly. At this point, you can go to File, Save As, and save this as a text file or an RTF file that you can send to the uh, CD plant. And these, new, these numbers should match your time code on Reaper. So let's check this out. So track two, whatever, should be at four minutes, 25 seconds, and seven CD frames. And there we go, 425.07, right? Yep, 425.07. And keep away should be 751.23. And there it is. Nice. So that's it. Your DDP files are made. Once that's done, I would delete DDP image. You don't really need this anymore. And I would highlight these, make a zip archive file and send that to your CD plants FTP server. You know, they set you an account up and you just saved yourself on shipping, on burning a CD, on using a jewel case, getting a padded envelope. You just saved about, you know, $10 or maybe $15, um, depending on what, time, what kind of shipping you use. And your replication will be much better than if you sent them a audio CD and they ripped it at like 52x and then your track comes back and it's like a little bit harsh and you're wondering what's going on. DDP is the way to go. You know, it really isn't that hard. It actually takes longer to explain it than it does to actually do it. But it took me a while to figure it out. Um, because the instructions weren't really that great for, you know, like these DDP instructions are kind of a joke. <laughs> um, I mean, they, they tell you stuff, but it doesn't tell you everything you need, you need to know. And it tells it in kind of like a, just too technically mannered way of doing things. The, the most important thing you have to remember is, again, start it out with the exclamation point. For your index zero, your in that your first track starts at two seconds, and then every other track after that, or every track after that, you put that there again with the hash mark, and then you end it with the at symbol.
after the last audio track. And again, you, you know, this is your selection. If I hit escape, it'll disappear. And that's about it. It's really not that hard once you make your first one. It's just a matter of typing the information in there and rendering it out and then verifying it with DDP tools and you should be good to go. Again, send your queue information to the CD plant along with your uh, zip file of all your files and everything should work out fine. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. See you in the next video.